All right, I'm gonna do it one more time. I think I got it. <sighs> okay. Hi, my name is Nini Nguyen, and I am at the Food 52 Kitchen today, and we are making gumbo. This is a very simple gumbo recipe that could be applied to any kind of meat that you want. Today, we're gonna make seafood gumbo, though, and I'm gonna start with the stock. Typically when I make seafood gumbo, I make a seafood stock and I usually use whatever I have in the house, but you want to roast all of your shells and I usually roast my onions with it. And then I have a carrot and a celery here that I'm just gonna roughly chop and I'm gonna add that to the stock as well. This is just gonna give a little bit of sweetness from the carrots and a little bit of bitterness from the celery. I don't usually use the tops, but I'm gonna add all of this to a tray of roasted crustacean shells that I have. I just get the smallest little crabs and we'll roast them right away. Um, shells from the shrimp and onions, I don't even peel them. Like I leave the skin on and quarter them and roast them. Um, you, I don't usually do it with any um, salt or oil um, just because you wanna control all of that once you make the seafood stock. But I'm just gonna add my celery and my carrots and I am going to dump this into boiling water and let this simmer for about an hour. And that's all you really want to simmer like seafood stock for because after a while it will get bitter. But if you were to use chicken or any other kind of meat you like, you can probably go for about maybe even two, two to three hours. And all the roasting, I love like caramelization of anything. So I never buy seafood stock just because most of the time I don't think it's that great. And why do that when you most likely have shells on your shrimp? You can always make a quick seafood stock. And while we let this cook, we're going to work on our roux. And that's gonna take a little while because you really want a dark, deep color roux. I like to say, I like to make my roux probably about the color of between milk and dark chocolate. Before we do any of those things, we have to talk about the ingredients for gumbo. The main thing in Creole cooking is two things, Creole seasoning and Trinity. Trinity is kind of like our mirepoix. It's usually, mirepoix is carrots, onion, celery, we substitute the carrots for bell peppers. And depending on what dish you do, like if you were to make etouffee, you would use red bell peppers, but I'm making gumbo, so I use green. And um, we're gonna dice some of it up. We're gonna add this to it. You usually want two parts onion, one part celery, one part bell pepper. And then I have a little bit of garlic that's minced as well. And you wanna have all of these ingredients ready because once your roux is done, you wanna throw all of this in so that it stops your roux from cooking and you don't burn your roux because that's the most important thing. You wanna make sure you have enough time to pay attention to it and slowly develop the flavor of the roux. Um, otherwise, you might burn it and then you have to start over which sucks because it takes so much time. We're just gonna add that here. Now for the, I'm like, I'm a psycho and I just want everything to be clean. This is me conditioning um, for Top Chef. The next key ingredient to Creole cooking is Creole seasoning. And here I have a tablespoon of granulated garlic, tablespoon of granulated onion, a half of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and you can adjust this to your liking because I like it kind of spicy, so I, I did a half a teaspoon to start. We have a full teaspoon of paprika, um, sweet paprika, and then a half teaspoon of white pepper. And I'm just gonna basically take my finger and mix it all together. And I don't add salt here because sometimes I want a lot more of this, sometimes I want a lot less. And if you add salt to this now, you really have to control how much you put in. The key to building all of this flavor is to add. Every time you add an ingredient, you add Creole seasoning. We have a few uh, bay leaves, but now I'm really gonna start on the roux. 
with the roux, you want to have equal parts fat to flour. Here we have two sticks of butter, and I'm just going to add a cup of flour. And it seems like a lot, but it's such a long process. You want to make sure you have a lot of roux. Otherwise, your gumbo won't be nice and thick. We'll start with that. You want to start with a like medium heat. We're slowly just going to melt that butter and it's going to tighten up into a paste. I make gumbo probably once every like two weeks. It's such a simple thing. People, I think when you think of gumbo, you think it's such a complicated dish, but you could really use any kind of leftovers. Any leftover meat that you've had from the week can be all thrown into the pot. And in New Orleans, I feel like a lot of people have gumbo, but when you eat gumbo in New Orleans, you never usually eat it at a restaurant. It's always at someone's house. Now you can make it at your own house with, <laughs> with this recipe. Making roux, you kind of have to babysit it. So that's why this is usually a good time. If you're chopping stuff, you can kind of chop it and stir. But for the most part, I feel like a lot of kids will tell you when making gumbo, like that was their job was to sit there and stir, which is probably not safe. It's very hot, like it's hot oil and flour. But you just have to be smart, I guess, and careful, very careful. This is just slowly melting and you want it to form like a paste. This is exactly how your roux should look. It should be thick and kind of saucy. I didn't really start cooking a lot of like Cajun Creole food until I went to college. But when you go tailgating at LSU, you'll see dudes with huge cast iron pots making jambalaya pasta and gumbo. Um, and we make it with duck when duck's in season. We'll make it with alligator when we're playing the gators. You could now kind of see, this is what would we call like a blonde roux. Um, there are certain dishes like etouffee that would call for a blonde roux. You don't really want it to be super, super dark. Once you start getting color, it kind of turns a little bit faster. And you can see that the consistency the flowers cooking and the roux basically looks a little bit more liquefied. So it's important to have all of your chopped vegetables ready to go because once your roux is exactly the color you want, you want to throw all those vegetables in to kind of stop the roux from cooking so it doesn't get darker. And then you can saute your vegetables just until they're like soft, like the onions are translucent. You want to make sure when you're stirring that you're using like a flat bottom wooden spoon. I really love cast irons for this. Just think that it develops great flavor, but you can definitely use like a regular Dutch oven that's enameled in the inside. So this is probably the most crucial time to stir. Some people like you can get away with not stirring earlier, but now it's like, you're glued to it. This would be a medium roux. I would use a medium roux for a, like a chicken and sausage gumbo, which is called gumbo yaya. I don't know why it's called that, like the name of it, but that's the name of a chicken sausage gumbo. And I usually use like a more of a medium roux just because I think that chicken and meat already has like a lot of depth in the, like the meat itself. So you don't really have to make a roux that dark, but because seafood is usually a lighter meat, um, I guess not even meat, it's seafood, but it needs like a deeper, richer flavor. This is exactly what you want. I'm just gonna lower this down. Now we're going to stir in our Trinity. So you want to do your garlic last just because it's very hot right now and you don't want it to burn. So I'm just going to throw in all of my vegetables. And then it's going to turn into kind of like a paste-like consistency. So you want to stir it. You see all that dark roux coating all of those vegetables. That's exactly what you want. And this is a great stopping point too add some salt. 
nice heavy pinch of salt because we haven't seasoned anything yet. And then two nice heavy pinches of Creole seasoning. We'll give that a stir. At this point, you want to do it at like a medium heat. And you let this kind of saute. Oh yeah, I forgot. And we need to add the garlic. Now that everything's kind of sauteing, we know the garlic's not gonna burn. So we're just gonna add that. And this is probably the only vegetables going into this dish. So you need to make sure you have enough. Give that a good stir. Next, we're going to strain our seafood stock. I'm gonna pick some of the seafood out first so I don't have to throw crabs all up in this. <laughs> so we're just gonna pour our stock in. And then we're going to add all of the stock into our sauteed vegetables and roux. But you want to do this a little at a time because the roux is a paste and if you were to put it all in, it will just be chunky. So I'm just going to ladle in a little bit of stock at a time, stirring as I go. Kind of like how what if you were to put miso in a broth, same kind of idea. At this point, I think it's okay for us to start pouring our broth. How do people do, like I always spill. I'm all, like it's just inevitable. Now we are going to bring this up to like a small boil and we're gonna season it. So I have a few bay leaves. We're just gonna throw whole dry bay leaves in. I'm gonna do a good, like two nice pinches of salt. Some Creole seasoning. And we're just gonna let this kind of reduce down a little bit just so that the seafood flavor concentrates. Mm, that looks very good. I must say myself. I'm just skimming the fat on the edges of the pot. Sometimes you'll get some of the vegetables, but it's okay. And I just, I actually save it in another bowl and I keep it in the fridge and I scramble eggs with it. So if I'm making like jambalaya, I'll start with this fat instead of any other, like just regular canola or butter. And it's so good. It has just so much depth of flavor. I am going to season this with a little bit of hot sauce and fish sauce. The hot sauce, it's not only just spice that I want, it's the vinegar. And this brand is my favorite, Crystal Hot Sauce. My uncle actually works for this company and I live by it. It just, it's not super, super spicy. I feel like Tabasco is something very strong and it's great with oysters, but this has just more of a mellow, but more, I. I feel like more flavor without the heat. I'm gonna be pretty generous with it. I want a few dashes. And you know, we're gonna do this all to taste. And I have a secret ingredient that I put in my gumbo, especially in my seafood gumbo, and it's fish sauce. I'm Vietnamese from New Orleans, and I kind of use the ingredients in, um, in Vietnamese cooking in my Creole cooking sometimes. And I think that's like, my secret to making it more um, umami, like forward. I'm just gonna taste this for seasoning and we have to let this reduce down a little bit, probably like a fourth of the way, just so that it concentrates all of that crustacean flavor and it helps thicken the stew or soup. So you don't wanna season it too salty. Mmm. So I'm gonna wait a little bit before I add a little more salt, but it's really nutty tasting and it has a lot of seafood, but I think it's still a little light and you want this to be a really rich stew. So we're just gonna let this simmer for about 45 minutes 
and we'll come back and season it. So the gumbo has been simmering for about 45 minutes and it's reduced. You can see it's about an inch lower than what it was. I'm just gonna taste it for seasoning. See if it needs any salt, some acid, maybe even some sugar. I think it needs a little bit of a little bit more hot sauce just for the acid. And I think that because everything's kind of really dark, I think that a little bit of sugar will balance out the whole dish. Every time I use fish sauce, I use a little bit of sugar. So I do like half a tablespoon into the pot. And I know that sounds a little weird, but I promise you it's gonna taste a lot more balanced. You want this dish to be a little sweet, salty, spicy, like very umami flavored, and, um, and have like a good bit of acid. Here we go. Yes. Um, so now we're gonna bring this to a boil and then we're gonna incorporate our seafood. So here we have this like luxurious spread of jumbo lump crab meat, crab claws. I really like the crab claws, even though sometimes I don't eat it. I like it when it comes out of the bowl. Um, some fish, because we don't usually do fish in Louisiana, but we're in the Northeast right now, and so we just use what we have. And then we have a bunch of shrimp that's been butterflied. And so, we're gonna go from like things that take the longest to cook versus things that cook within like an instant. I actually like to season the seafood first. So we'll just add a little bit of Creole seasoning and a little bit of salt. Because this is such a big tray, I'm gonna add a little bit at a time and not overflow our pot of seafood gumbo. So we're just gonna throw that in. And this is gonna make it even more concentrated in seafood flavor because it's seafood. We're gonna throw the claws in. They usually take a little bit longer and they're resilient. They can stay in a little longer. Give this a stir. And you can see the shrimp is star are starting to curl and turn pink. And that's when we're gonna throw in some fish. You can put crawfish, you can put oysters. Oysters are really good. I'm gonna actually throw in our crab at the absolute last step. But before that, we're gonna throw in our okra. So you can use fresh okra like we have here today, or you can use frozen, um, but all in all, you wanna put this at the end. It helps thicken the gumbo, and it also, um, you don't wanna overcook it because then it'll just make the whole pot slimy. So our shrimp is cooking, our fish is turning white, you can see, and it's getting flaky. And so I'm just gonna throw all of this okra in, and then we're going to, because we just dumped all kinds of vegetables and, and seafood and we're gonna season it with a little bit more salt and Creole seasoning. So, Creole seasoning. And a nice heavy pinch of salt. While this cooks, um, we're going to look at our garnishes. So we have um, just some regular green onions that are chopped. And we have um, gumbo filet, which is just basically dried, crushed, sassafras leaves and this is something that really a lot of people will argue like this is what makes gumbo gumbo um, and for seafood gumbo I really love having gumbo filet uh, with chicken and sausage you can kind of get away without um, having this but I think this is a key component to a seafood gumbo that and of course seafood now I'm gonna throw in our jumbo lump crab meat you have a choice of either, because the, the crab's already cooked, you can just put lumps of crab meat on top, which I might save some to put some on top, or you can put it all in the gumbo. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit of half and half. How am I doing? You're doing great. 
<laughs> this is my key to not having to dirty so many tasting spoons. Yum. And now it's pretty much ready. And I'm gonna make myself a bowl. A couple of key components that you need. I always, I know I put hot sauce in it, but I always finish it because I think the nice brightness at the end is what you need for something like such so deep and rich as this gumbo. And then we have gumbo filet. And I usually like to put a little bit right on top, but I'm gonna have some rice because you have to have a little bit of rice with your gumbo. Some people, like in Lafayette, they put potato salad, which is pretty good too. And I've actually had um, like whole eggs in their like chicken gumbo. We'll put some green onions, and I think I'm gonna put some of this pretty lump crab meat. And then we're gonna just tap a little bit of gumbo filet, and there you have it. Seafood gumbo. I'm gonna put in a couple of dashes of this before I taste. And here we are. <laughs> All this hard work. Mm, I really love the firmness of the okra, putting it in at the very last minute. But this has the perfect amount of heat, the sweetness from the seafood, and just the richness from like the time that the seafood stock has like reduced. It's just a very, very flavorful bowl and I'm very happy with it. I hope you guys are too. What do I do? I'm like so awkward. I'm like, why? Are you? I don't want people watching me eat. <laughs> It was really fun showing you guys how to make gumbo. You can find this recipe at food52 and do I say dot com? Okay. Give me comments on anything else you would like to um, learn. I want to teach something Vietnamese. So tell me your favorite Vietnamese dish and maybe you'll see me make it. You can also find me at Chef Nini Nguyen on Instagram. I did it. <laughs>